All right, you guys, Hate Street Voice, I'm here. I'm so excited. I'm interviewing Station 12 up here on Stand-In. You know, the awesome truck that we all love with the steal your face. And then I get to interview Captain Justin Shore, who is right here. Good morning. Hi. Welcome to Station 12. Thanks for having us. Yes. We're totally excited. Thank you for your time and your service and everything. Of course, and a special thank you to the members of Engine and Truck 12 for hosting us today. Awesome, okay. So I'm so excited. You said what year is this building built? So this firehouse was built in 1956 as part of a 1952 bond measure. Uh, it's most noted, notable, the, there's 12 other firehouses that were built at the same time in the city between 52 and 56. Um, but this beautiful mid-century architecture that really carries through. Uh, you've got the large bay doors. Uh, you've got the residents up above where the firefighters live. Uh, it's an iconic San Francisco firehouse from the 50s. I have to ask, is that skull for Halloween or is that always there? Probably for Halloween. <laughs> it is spooky time. Hi. Uh, yep. Mariano. This is Mariano Elias from nice the Nice to meet you. you. You're, you're, you're on the, camera uh, here. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm one of the other public information officers. All right. Nice to meet nice you, to meet sir. You. I look forward to this. And thank you for your time of and course, your service. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the other things I'll point out as you as you go around San Francisco, and especially at Station 12, you'll notice that we have red lights yeah. in the front of the firehouse. That's from the old days when we used to hang a lantern on the old uh, engine and truck barns uh -huh. so that we would take the lantern off, put it on the, the pump or the hose wagon and take it to a fire. And so if the other members came to the house and they saw no lantern, they'd know to go to the next firehouse. So we still keep that tradition alive with the red lights in front of the firehouse. So as you drive through the neighborhood, you'll be able to see that there's a number of residents, 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 a big garage with a red light. That's probably a firehouse. Wow, that's fascinating. Thank you. Wow. All right. Yep. And then, of course, the iconic San Francisco articulated ladder truck. This is a 100-foot extendable ladder. And you'll see uh, in the back of the vehicle, that's what's called the tiller seat. And that actually has a steering wheel in it so that we can steer the back of the trailer through the narrow streets and the congested areas here in San Francisco, especially in the Haight District. We know there's hills, we know there's tight streets, traffic. This lets us get this vehicle directly up to a fire building to affect both ventilation of uh, heat and poisonous gases to affect rescues but also to get our firefighters up to perform those rescues. I mean, that is a unique thing to this, to this, to the fire department here in the city is the it hills. Is. I mean, that, that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world, really. It, it, Maybe Italy, I don't know. It does, there's a lot of hills in a lot of neighborhoods, <laughs> yeah. but San Francisco specifically yeah. specializes in this equipment and our firefighters are experts in being yeah. able to put ladders up. Imagine putting a ladder up in your house but it's on a hill. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. So these firefighters are experts at being able to put up ladders on yeah. hills with all the power lines that we have, like you see across the street here from Station 12, to be able to put a ladder underneath those power right. lines yeah. to be able to rescue people from the higher floors. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so can you tell me who painted that or do you know who painted the... Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Do we know that? Oh, yes. oh, there you go. Uh, there happens to be somebody at the Central Fire Department ladder shop. Uh -huh. That gentleman uh, is also an artist, and he uh, talks to the fire station and asks them individually, give me some ideas about your neighborhood and some things you'd like to see on, uh, it's called the Johnson Bar. Okay. Did you mention that? So no. The jo the Johnson, no. It's called the Johnson Bar, and what it is, it's just a long lever. It's made out of wood, uh, made here by our ladder shop. Our, our ladders are made here in San Francisco at the Central Fire Department Ladder Shop. We're the only fire department that still has a working ladder shop that makes uh, ladders and maintains them all uh, and then this started probably about five years ago where each individual only the truck has this long ladder uh, uh, and it has the Johnson bar That's so each one has one and they each wanted to individualize their their Johnson bar with the neighborhood so obviously the, the Haight-Ashbury district is historic iconic uh, you know, obviously the uh, Grateful Dead symbol. Yes. And, Steal uh, your face, it's called. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, so that, that's kind of uh, peace and love. Yeah, of course. That's, that right? Yeah, you guys still, represent. Still, still mm -hmm. saying it. Still, yeah. We still need it. Right? Yeah. And it's interesting. I, I, I live on Page and Masonic, and I saw somebody, they were doing a drill, and it was all uh, wooden ladders. Yes. And he explained to me that's because, you know, if it's electrical. electricity. Right. 
Yeah, um, uh, they're very uh, solid. Right. Uh, there's less flex in the ladders yeah. uh, opposed to aluminum. It's fascinating. Um, so they're very sturdy. Uh, that way you can have uh, uh, many firefighters travel. Some of these ladders are over 80 years old. Wow. And they're able to replace uh, rungs or partial sections of a ladder. You see some of the yeah. equipment here that uh, is installed by the uh, ladder uh, so folks. Cool. Thank you, ladder people. Yes. Uh, so, and then the companies in the station uh, maintain small uh, amounts of, of detail on it. But okay. uh, potentially they can get uh, messed up on buildings or burned sometimes uh, if the fire reaches the ladder. Which yeah. Try to avoid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for explana explaining that yeah. beautiful uh, thing that we all wave to going, that is so cool. All right. So, you want to show us around the, the fort? Sure. Come on in. <laughs> all right. So excited. So you'll see a lot of the original elements from the 1950s, the open stairways. Because of what we now know about diesel and vehicle exhaust, this is incredibly unsafe. So they've actually had to retrofit doors at the top of the stairs that lead to the, the firefighters' quarters to try to keep a lot of those dangerous gases and soot and particulates out. Uh, the newer firehouses, the few that we've had uh, rebuilt in the city, uh, station number five and station number one downtown, have addressed those issues but a lot of these older firehouses haven't been updated yet so it's just little fixes like a door at the top of the stairs but you'll still see these architectural elements it's beautiful and my it, dad was an architect in the bay area so i really appreciate and respect yeah, yeah. and you, you can also appreciate that it's 1952 yeah. and they want to put a modern firehouse into a historic beautiful edwardian victorian neighborhood yeah, yeah. it's very difficult to match that yeah all right, cool. So we do still have the original wood uh, equipment lockers. Each member is assigned a locker, and that's where we keep our firefighting gear. So cool. Mm -hmm. This way. We also still use slide poles to get down from the upper levels. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Yep. Everything is about the quicker we can get to your emergency, the more effective we can be. And this saves time. The red lights and siren save time. You guys have helped me out once, once or twice. <laughs> There's somebody up there cleaning. Yep, like I said, they're in the middle of their triannual cleaning. Uh, all the members take great pride in their firehouse because the shifts that we work are 24 hours. We live, eat, sleep together. It's our second family. We spend a third of our lives with our firehouse families. What is it, four days on and or it's just five days? Well, what's the schedule like? It roughly works out to one day on, two days off. Okay. But it's important to remember that that's 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. the next day. Right. So you miss two mornings. Okay. Uh, I have young kids, so I miss two-thirds of their mornings. But I get two-thirds of my mornings with my firehouse family. All right. And your kids, daddy's a fireman. That's pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, another steely. Yep, another steely. <laughs> This is part of, of what we call company pride. Each company has a mascot, a logo, yeah. uh, something that brings them together as a, a family, as a group. And of course, for Station 12 here in the Hate, this makes perfect sense. Are there any deadheads in the crew? You know, I'm not sure. We have a, we have a lot of firefighters in from other stations today. Okay. Uh, whenever we're short-staffed, we try to bring people in from other stations. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know particularly. It's okay, but you know, you like music, I'm sure. Exactly. Watch your step. Yep. So each station has a dedicated map of what we call their first do area. First do area? So what this means is that if there's a fire yeah. in this area, engine or truck 12 will be the first unit do or to arrive okay. at that station, or excuse me, at that fire. And right. the way we determined that in the old days was using this old card case file. So what happens if every firehouse still has these to this day? Oh my god, is it so alright if I pull one out? Of course, the city is separated out. into different boxes oh or groups god. of blocks. So this one, for example, is the intersection of Polk and Turk Streets. And again, this is probably from the 50s. Oh, uh oh. And right now we're getting a call. Oh no. So, follow me, the truck's going to get a call.
We'll go back to the card catalog in just a minute. Okay. So what you heard was the overhead announcement. Uh -huh. Very loud. Yeah. Very surprising. Yes. All of the lights came on in the station. Yes. Those are our automatic lights. Those yes. are still activated via uh, telegraph signal. So in the in the early days before radio communications were standardized, the fire department used uh, teletype and telegraph. Wow. Uh, using Morse code. Or excuse Morse me, code? A, a oh. number code, excuse okay. me. Okay, yeah. Uh, got ahead of myself. Ah. Uh, so what would happen is, and it'll it'll make sense when we look at the card box again, yeah. is the station would be notified via a series of bells as to which vehicle, whether it was the engine or the truck, was due to respond to the call. Okay. So what we have now is the automatic lights still turn on using the same mechanism that was in existence when we had the telegraph that actually came in. So there's there's a lot of living history that is still in the San Francisco Fire Department. Now the newer stations are using uh, specifically modern uh, telephone and computer communications. Digital, yeah. We do have a backup system mm -hmm. here, and of course now we have radio communications that we can use. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the bulk of the alerting is still on those old systems. So they're getting called somewhere. You said that they some yes. but yeah, okay. Yep. So interesting. Uh, Jesse, yeah. Do you want to give them here? Uh, no, they, they're in service. They can keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So if we come out here, you'll be okay. able to see it. Right now. We'll just stand right here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just really a, a, a moment of understanding the psychology of being a fireman as well. I mean, you have to be really present. Always ready, always prepared. Kind of uh, somewhere between the Marines and the Boy Scouts yeah. is us. It is a paramilitary organization. We do use the rank and structure of the military. Yeah. Um, but that's when we're in an emergency situation. We need to trust and follow the instructions from our officers yeah. in order to complete the task at hand. Yeah. And I mean, it's a childhood dream. I, I have a friend who works for the Port of San Francisco, and he's like, oh, I always wanted to be the guy in the back driving the, you know. It, I mean, it really is kind of a... Everybody wants to slide down the fire yeah, exactly. and drive the back of the fire truck yeah. without realizing that that's very little of what we do. Yeah. <laughs> lots of drills, yeah. lots of training, and danger. lots of preparation. Uh, those drivers need to know the neighborhood inside and out, left, right, up and down. Yeah, yeah. Because when they arrive at the scene of an emergency, it can't be a surprise. Yeah. They have to know and have a plan when they get there. Does that mean that most, a lot of them are native San Franciscans or Bay Area people? I mean, are... Not it, necessarily. Not necessarily, The 18-week yeah. training program that they go through mm -hmm. gets them ready for the, the community that they're joining in okay. the fire department. Okay. But also at the same time, just having that exposure to the city and working in the city, yeah. you acclimate very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue back with Thank the uh, you. Yes. So in the old days, yes. What would happen is we would have a ticker tape machine uh, here, and it would be ticking out different numbers, which had different what we call bell codes. So if the bell rang one, two, one, that means that we are about to get a two, one dispatch or something with two engines and a truck. Then we would have to listen to the bells. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. That means engine four, engine three. Or if it was a reported fire, it would come out as three, one, one, four. And whoever was taking care of the board at that time, I'm not sure if Station 12 has their original pegboard, we'll take a look. But this card indicates which fire engines, which fire trucks, and which chief officers have to go to that fire. Wow. 
Wow. And every fire station would have the exact same cards and be able to keep track of when they were due at this fire. So for example, we're at station 12. And for this fire, let's see if station 12 is even listed. Nope. So station 12 would never be dispatched to this fire unless something very, very bad happened. Okay, gotcha. Like earthquakes in 1906? <laughs> something like that, yes. This and then important. we put it back in order? Yeah. And there we go. Okay. okay. Can you let them know we're coming in real quick? Yeah. Alright. We're coming in. Coming in. Hey. Hi. How are you? Very good. All right. Uh, well, uh, this is the kitchen? Come, since you're coming in okay. here, yeah. This, oh, this is the kitchen okay. area. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You guys tell me. Area. Okay. Uh, all firefighters are required to cook. Um, if I take myself, for example, I did not know how to cook when I first came in the fire department. Uh, they asked me, do you know how to cook? I said, no. They said, do you know how to read? I said, well, yes. <laughs> they said, well, perfect. Then you can cook and go in the kitchen and start helping the cook. So I just happened to have this. What year was that? Do you mind? Uh, when did you start? 2000. 2000. Okay, great. And it was at this station? Or? No, okay. uh, Station 5 on Turk and Webster. Okay. Is that where you're based now or whatever you call it? Station? Uh, no, I was my first house. They call it your probationary house. Your, okay. your first house you go to. Uh, okay. You're on probation for one year. Okay. Uh, and they switch you around, uh, around the city. Okay. So I started off in the Fillmore for six months on a truck. And then six months later, I moved to uh, the Bayview on an engine. So, have they just described what the difference is yet between an engine and a truck? No. Okay, so um, the truck which we saw outside is uh, the ladder truck that has the large ladder on it. Mm -hmm. It has the uh, fifth person in the back who drives the, the rear wheels only. Uh, there's no water on that truck. It's only ladders and heavy equipment and tools okay. and the breathing apparatus, SCBA, is what it's called, self-contained breathing apparatus, okay. that all the firefighters wear inside with a mask. Mm -hmm. It's not oxygen, contrary to most reporters, it's uh, compressed air. Oxygen supports combustion, yeah. so we don't yeah. want to yeah. accelerate the fire. Uh, so that's a truck company. An engine company has four personnel, and that has a pump, a water tank, and hose. So their primary function is to go into the building and put the fire out. With the, They have a minimum 500 gallons of water on, on uh, each fire engine, and then um, they can hook up to the fire hydrant or another fire engine can give, give them their 500. Uh, so that's the difference between an engine and a truck. Thank you. Yes. Back to the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, we use cookbooks. Yes. Uh, so this, this particular house has this cookbook here. All right. Uh, and every day it's um, dependent. Uh, it goes off a chart. So the chart will say when whoever the cook is due. So if they say, hey, Jimmy, you're cooking today. Great. Everyone comes in the morning and they sign their name on the board. We'll show you a board here, yeah. um, their name. And if they're in for lunch and dinner, those are the two required meals that each firefighter, the cook of the day uh, needs to make. Wow. So they make a menu. Um, the more recent, uh, since, since I've come in yeah. 2000, was a little more diet. Anyone have any dietary restrictions? Yeah anyone allergic to anything right. uh, and then some people have preferences that don't I don't eat shellfish I you know whatever we had yeah. one guy who was in the army he had salmonella poisoning I will never eat chicken again <laughs> so he doesn't eat chicken oh, yeah, I hear. <laughs> so um, I will say it's gotten healthier food yeah. over the years for the most part um, it's very meat and potatoes and yeah. stews kind of thing a lot of yeah. um, and then you'll see a lot more uh, healthier salads or fish and you know, chicken options these days, but it, it really is uh, up to the cook for the yeah. day. I mean, what you eat is you guys got to go out there and do what you do. Yeah, you know, you so, got yeah we do. Uh, well so nourished. If I was the cook for the day, I'd, I'd come in here and see, what do, what do we have? What can I use? So, um, uh, we have some, uh, <laughs> we got some milk. Everyone drinks coffee, all the firefighters yeah, drink coffee. Yeah. So, some people like, uh, you know, reduced fat, we got 2%, you know, and, and we have to buy all our food ourselves. The city does not provide. Here's, so wow. Here's, here's an emergency right here. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Sriracha. Get the water Everybody out. Get the water out. Right? Get the house. The house in the city is in crisis <laughs> yes. mode. With, uh, um, with no sometimes we look at leftovers <laughs> and we say, hey, I can use some of this meat to make a soup. Yeah. And we'll get some potatoes and yeah. some celery and some onions and awesome. carrots. Awesome. And we'll make a uh, refrigerator soup. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Uh, we do have uh, the city provides beautiful stuff. The stove. Yep. Uh, we have to clean that. So right, right now we're in the middle of what we're going to call triannual. Yeah. Triannual is a heavy cleaning of the fire station three times a year, where the uh, on-duty assistant chief comes and inspects. He was mentioning, yeah, yes. Well, so yeah. they'll come in and they'll take a look at the oven and say, mm, yeah, yeah. you need some work here yeah. or whatnot. So they, yeah. they schedule yeah. the clean, so it's pretty so okay. If you, if you take a look at this, now, <laughs> use we're, daily. We're feeding nine people yeah. with two full meals yeah. every day. Yeah. And it looks this gorgeous. Yeah, you know what? Right. Yeah, better than mine. Right. Um, <laughs> better than mine as well. <laughs> so we have all the uh, amenities. Um, like I said, uh, everyone pays what we call house dues. So every member of the fire station is required to pay roughly about 50 to $75, depending on each station. Um, and that'll cover uh, syrup, sugar, toothpicks, That blows coffee. my mind that the city doesn't pay for that. Right. That's wild. Anyway, right. pancake, I don't want to get political. Pancake mix, yeah. you know, salt and pepper and all that. You know, I, I come in here, I say, hey, well, we buy all this. Uh, the firefighters from each station. Yeah. So that's what they use to cook All right. uh, for their meals. Okay. And the city provides a dishwasher. It's required. When oh, you have, thank you, uh, city. People, uh, a certain amount of, I think it's five or more, ten, nine, ten or more employees required by OSHA to have a provided dishwasher. Okay. And the department, uh, the department, we have to buy our own pots and pans, knives. No everything. comment. Yes. Everything. Yes. Wow. And then we have the, hey, I have a headache. Yeah, we all need some vitamins. Yep. Perfect. Don't don't take some right now. No dog food. You don't have the classic Dalmatian uh, dog in it. We no. actually uh, have a rule: no animals in the fire station. Yeah. We do have uh, therapy animals okay. that are available yes. to us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, due to things. Yeah, I understand. Passes, I get it. Yeah, the stations don't have mascots. I get it. Anymore. I get it. What's no. this original Sailor Jimmy spice rum? <laughs> Decor. Decor. Yeah. 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 I love it. But, but here, yeah. Yeah, it's, this, I, this actually may be our Last Supper. Oh, whoa. So there's a picture of the Last Supper. A play on uh, oh. Oh. A little play on well, words here. Well, our again. Ladder, a ladder shop That's graciously so cool. donates a section of ladder that That's they don't so need great. anymore. So it's That's a pot, pot rack. So cool. Paella dish. Yep. So we got some creative, uh, you know. Cooks. Are you a native San Franciscan? Born and raised in San Francisco. Born at UCSF here. All right. Right over the Mission District. All right. Stones yeah. throw from where we stand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good old San Ig and San Iggy. San Ignatius. Uh, oh yeah, I went to yeah. Sacred Heart. Yeah. I went to Sacred Heart. Yeah. Um, and uh, I worked in the Mission District for 15 years. Wow. Uh, about five blocks from where I grew up. Wow, that's yeah. wild. And I'm bilingual, so I speak Spanish. So that was kind of the... Uh, and you're the, here now at Station 12 or no? No, I'm actually at the Public Information Office okay, right Okay, got now. it. The other yeah. PIO. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and great. I was, uh, I was at recruit training, training all the new recruits that come into the fire department. Now, training center is on Treasure Island. So I trained about roughly about 250 uh, new firefighters. Oh, how great is that? Yeah. That must be really rewarding. Yeah, it's rewarding. Yeah. I mean, how old were you both when you first started? I was 25 when I started here. Uh, I started as an explorer scout at 16. Woo! So wow! Over 30 years going on calls. That's beautiful. But 22 years here in the city. Thank you. Yeah. All right, and I'm getting hungry hanging out yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> one, other, one other interesting aspect yeah. of the architecture I'll show you, and, and here's something that you don't have built into modern fire stations, is an incoming and outgoing phone booth. Oh my god. So that the firefighters could have privacy when receiving or making telephone calls home. Wow. I love the decor in here. It's cobbled together by the by the men and women that call this place home for a third uh, of their lives. And every every photograph, every frame, everything has a very long, detailed, and honored story behind uh, it. So cool. Yeah. The station will go on trips together, camping trips, rafting trips, retreats. Let me ask you this now that I'm staring at it is. Uh, a lot of people ask me, because I'm the hate street voice, well, how do I get one of those steal your face t-shirts or patches? Do I go up to the station? I'm like, I'm not going to send everybody up here, because I don't yeah. think that's the thing to do. Let me, let me find just out. just they, throwing it out there. shirts and patches online, or just here at the station? Uh, not the we have a, 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 a yeah. Say again? Yeah. 
Yeah. Hi. Okay. Oh, hi. So this is Meyer Glenn, one of our paramedics. Thank it's you. Firefighter paramedics. Yep. The uh, the state leaves are only allowed to be sold to regular members. Regular okay. members. So, yeah, that's the agreement we have for that was made before you know, many years ago. So, okay. So the rules of using trademark images. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So Could, only only the members can get them. We do have an alternative T-shirt that looks very cool, and uh, people are welcome to come by, and anybody can buy. Yeah, so okay, so you do us? have yeah. some to buy. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, great. Because a lot a lot of people that live high, a lot of people. Music that isn't too old. Well, there we go. All right. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, perfect. Oh, okay. Look at that. That's perfect. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so they can come up to the station and ask for a sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Can ring great. the bell. Ring the bell. How do you ring the bell? Because I tried to do that. We'll go out front. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for your you service. Burnt axes that were oh my at a, at a fire. god. Yeah. And obviously they support the Central Giants, oh the Forty Niners. Uh, you guys probably an old softball logo shirt here. So we have. Uh, interstation softball competition. So Station 12 had their own no, that's a, you know, circus, their no, no. 80s uh, shirt there, as you can see. Wow. Someone ran over someone's helmet here. They must have had it on the floor. Oh my and, God. And, uh, as I ran over the chair? Truck, yeah, I truck uh, ran it over. Wow. Nice going. Oh, that's an oldie hat, too. Here is the sign up board I was telling you about here. Oh, very old school oh, yeah. chalkboard. Yeah. So uh, he signed in for lunch and dinner. Edelman signed in for lunch and dinner. Gordon as well, and Murphy. So not, every, <laughs> not everybody has signed in. And in here, uh, your car keys, in case you need to move your, your vehicles oh, wow. for whatever reason. Wow, wow, Everyone's wow. got a mailbox. Wow. Uh, we got some uh, rules and general orders, yeah. rules and regulations. Yeah. So. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll get some nice to. Thanks for letting us in your area there. That is our financial uh, plan. Oh, wow. Well, well. <laughs> All right, go for it, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye, financial guy. I just make firefighters happy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, and of course, some local decoration here. To yeah. Uh, yeah. Aww. Where you're located. Yeah. And I work yeah. at the corner of, I work at the Welcome Hate and Ashbury shop on the mm -hmm. corner there, so. There you go. There you go, people of the neighborhood. Woo! Yeah. Morning. So like I said, every firehouse, I mean, we don't call them fire stations. What like do you call them? Communities do. This is a firehouse. Firehouse, okay. This is our home. Okay. This is where the members, like I said, I cannot stress it enough. This is where they live, yeah. work. You saw where they eat. You saw where they cook meals together. This is a firehouse. And if you, if you drive through the community, you'll notice in front of the firehouses, it's printed. No parking, no mm -hmm. stopping, mm -hmm. firehouse. Okay. And so we really try to stress that. Okay, fantastic. Let me show you how to ring the bell out front. Yay. And where are you from originally, Justin? Uh, I was born and raised in Southern California. Okay. So you'll yeah, you'll I came over the, here. I gave up. Yeah, the original <laughs> 1950s doorbell. Oh my God. If there's no answer, it means that the units assigned to the station might be on another incident, okay. or responding to a call, okay. or they might be in a meeting. Okay. We're cleaning and they'll get to you as soon as they can. Okay, great. We just we ask that the public not enter the firehouse without being invited because you never know if we're doing a drill okay. and you can't see us or we're about to spray water or we just mop the floors and it might be slippery. Right, okay. It's it's very dangerous. So yeah. if you just if you pretend like you're going to visit someone else's house, you wouldn't just walk in the front door, you'd still mop. Bring the bell. Thank you. Fantastic. Good to know. Of course. Yeah. Let me show you the plaque around the front here. Okay. Great. A picture of it that's gonna have all the details about when the house was built for you. Hey guys. So here you go. This will chronicle the bond measure, when the station was built, and also when they took down the hose tower for earthquake safety. Oh, they took down the hose tower. So there used to be a hose tower yeah. at every firehouse because our fire hoses were made out of cotton. And after every fire, we would have to let them dry completely or else they would mold and deteriorate. But we don't use those anymore. We use a nylon jacketed hose. Okay. So that we don't have to, we still have to dry them out. Mm. but they don't have to hang dry for days at a time. Okay. So the, the hose towers were removed because they were not seismically safe. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. And then the most important plaque that's on every firehouse in the city is a commemoration of any firefighters that have been assigned to the station who have lost their lives while responding from it.
Thank you. Of course. Yeah. And that's station 12. Okay, so I have a couple questions. Is it okay if I of course. dig through my thing here? I can, I can do my best. <laughs> Hang on. I won't put you on the spot, no, that's Justin. Nope. Okay. Eh, Let me get that right. for you. Uh, there you go. Okay. So. Let's see. Hang on, kids. <laughs> professional. My trained professional. Uh, okay. So my question is, everyone loves seeing the Grateful Dead sticker on the side of the extended T12 truck, which is now called a... I was told it's a... Steely head, I think you said? No, no, the truck it? itself, the extended, I call it an extended truck, but it's well, the, a ladder truck. It's la an aerial truck company. Okay. So we just call it a truck company. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we wave to the firefighters, they ring the bell in response. Is there a special pride that comes with serving this particular community with its unique cultural history? What's one of the best things about working in the Haight-Asbury district? I can't speak for the members of right. Station 12, but right. what I can say is that every firefighter that's assigned to a specific community takes pride in serving that community yeah. and that neighborhood specifically. Hyper-local, we have 47 firehouses spread throughout our jurisdiction, yeah. and every one of those is hyper-local to the direct community. Yeah. Okay, great. I, just real quick, I can say that in my history uh, earlier as a firefighter paramedic, I did ser have the opportunity to serve on Engine 12 mm -hmm. for a number of days, and it is always fun and exciting to be in a new neighborhood, yeah. especially when it's eclectic. Yeah, it's yeah okay. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to answer these because you're not uh, here. Um, but you might be. The the stereotype of lots of partying, drug use, loitering, homelessness in the Haight-Ashbury, plus the Golden Gate Park concerts make it prone to emergency calls around those behaviors, which helped inspire Rock Med, Free Clinic, Youth Alliance, Larkin Street, all of that sort of, you know, a lot of street kids come here, a lot of that. Do you think it affects this station in particular in a certain way? Not any more than most other stations. Of course, being so close to the park, there can be a need for units to respond into special events. Yeah. Uh, we just had a large con weekend concert series that was there in the park. Outside lands. And just understanding that the resources that are here at this station are available to anyone, anywhere in the community. Okay. It doesn't matter if you live here, work here, or just passing through, or found yourself here. Okay. They will respond and assist. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Sorry, guys. Um, well, again, uh, are there stories, photos, memories of firefighters? Yeah, we already saw that inside the, what do you call that area I was just in? That's, That's the, called the day room. The day room, okay. We got to see a lot of the, the uh, mementos, I will call them. Yep. Uh, and you said they, you don't know if they're deadheads or not, but they love music. Um, we've got we've got folks of all stripes and, in the fire service. Yeah. Male, female. Male, female. Rock and roll, uh, classical. Rock, rock and roll, classical. You, you name it. We, yeah. we might have a Beatles fan sitting next to a deadhead, yeah. sitting next to someone that just wants to go home and play their cello. <laughs> it, we've got all sorts of the fire service. That's beautiful. Um, what can we as residents, as a community, and this could be for any community, do to make, I said the hate Asprey District, a stronger, healthier, better place to live? The best thing you can do is start local, and that's in your own home. Make sure you've got smoke detectors in every occupiable space in every bedroom. Make sure you've got a carbon monoxide detector installed on every level of your home. Practice a fire escape plan. You can go to sf-fire.org and find resources that'll help you build an exit drill for your home. Practice it with your family. Have two ways to get out of the house in case of a fire. Have a meeting place out front where you can congregate after everyone escapes and be able to let engine and truck 12 know mm -hmm. everyone's out of the house mm -hmm. or we can't find my dad. Where was the last room he was in? Practice fire safety. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher in your kitchen and in your machine room, yeah. uh, down where your, your furnace or your water heater may be. Yeah. Check in on your neighbors. Yeah. Make sure they're doing okay. Yeah. If you haven't seen them for a while, knock on the door. Ask how they're doing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I already asked about how to get your free, not free, how to get your sweatshirt. <laughs> now we know it's on yep. camera. Uh, and Hate Street Voice is hyper local with a global perspective. What would you like to say to this community, let alone communities all over the world, as far as just just beyond being a firefighter, but just as you know, being human and, and what you know, what do you want to say to communities all over the world, let alone here? Let's take care of each other. Let's watch out for each other. We're honored to be able to serve this community and every community where a San Francisco fire engine can respond to. Like I said, each of these stations is a house. 
It's a home. It's where we live. So we're part of the community. We're not just coming in for a moment. Mm -hmm. We're glad to be welcomed into your home yeah. on what could be the worst day of your life. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make your bad day better. Yeah. All right. One last thing that just popped into my head is I, you know, I told you I work. Have a good one, financial guy. Uh, <laughs> Is I work at the corner, Welcome Hate in Ashbury, a little plug for you guys, uh, just at the local shop for a little extra cash. But um, sometimes you guys come in there for lunch and they grab something at Gus's Market, you know, and, and I'll, I'll always say hi because I'm brash and bold. But uh, I think some people are intimidated, you know, is it okay to go up to the officer and say hello? And, you know, I mean, we shouldn't be afraid. I mean, we should. It's always okay to say hello to your local <laughs> firefighters. Absolutely. Yeah. When you see us come in, just say hello. Yeah. If you see us driving by, wave. Yeah. We'll wave back or ring the bell if yeah. we can. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, hey, thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. Um, you mentioned, I guess I could do this off the camera. Let's, let's just say thank you. I, I was sad that I didn't get to ride on the back of the, of the, uh, ladder truck, I'm yeah. calling it. Um, but, but, uh, you said there might be an opportunity that I could give you my camera and somebody could hold it and maybe do a drive down Hate Street. So there was a possibility, unfortunately, the truck They're is gone. still on their incident, so we won't be able to, to track them down. But okay. if, if there's a possibility to capture that for you and send it to you, we'll definitely do that. Yeah, that would be really amazing, because everybody would like to know what it looks like from the bird's eye view. It's cool yeah. I bet it is. It really I mean, is. that's... Uh, all right, cool. Well, hopefully we can dial that in before the fall edition comes out, and we look forward to... Uh, to having you guys on the cover. Speaking of which, we're not gonna be able, I can come back. I live on Page and Masonic, so maybe that photo op. Sure. Or maybe you could take a photo of all of them in front of the truck. Well, any anytime you see the, the engine of the truck out in the community, you're more than welcome to take a photo. Or okay, great, one. perfect, perfect. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask these guys if they'll give me a quote, is that okay? Yeah, okay, yeah. hang on. I wanted to thank you. Yeah. Do you mind if you all introduce nice, yourselves? Because nice I, I live on Page and Masonic. This is the Hate Street Voice. It's for a local. Nice to meet you. Um, so do you mind introducing yourself and then say something to the community uh, if you want? I'm shy. I'm camera shy. You're shy? I'm shy. All right. Okay. Be shy. Okay. You don't have to introduce yourself. Just tell me what do you want to say to the Hate Ashbury community? Uh, we are happy to be here at your service. Whenever you need something, we're always here to help. If you're ever interested, Please ask a firefighter any question you want. You see them on the street. Going to Gus's Market, getting we're, lunch. We're, we're always, I see you guys. We're always here to help. <laughs> All right, peace, y'all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for your service. All right. Peace.